Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video, I want to talk about this charger that I recently purchased. This is the Abso DC to DC charger and it supports up to 50 amps of charging. Now what's really cool about this charger is it supports both DC to DC charging. So from your alternator or starter battery, you can charge your battery or it supports solar input. So what's really cool about that is if the sun's not shining, you have your solar array, well, you can still charge your battery. So let me go ahead and talk a little bit more about this and show you how I use this in my setup. Now I'm currently connecting it to my 80 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. It would work with Battleborn or SOK batteries or even lead acid. So if you have an RV with a house battery, this will also work for you. Here's a closer look of the wire connections at the bottom of the unit. You have your DC input here, solar input here, and out to the battery that you're going to charge here. All these wires are 12 gauge wires soldered to ring terminals, which are then screwed into uh, each individual place here. Now the outdoor case that fits this perfectly is this B&W International Type 1000 case. Okay, so here's the owner's manual for the charger. In case you ever need to reprogram it or change anything, it's good to always have that with you. You can stuff this back here on the lid and then put the foam in, tuck the foam in and it holds it and keeps it safe back there. So pretty awesome little trick there. Let's go ahead and throw this in here. It's almost as if this charger was built specifically for this case. There is no back and forth play and there's only like a half centimeter back and forth this way. So all these wires, they just tuck in um, very nicely. So it all shuts without a problem. So um, overall, I love how portable this is. Okay, so this is how I plan to use the DC to DC charging aspect of the charger. Now, mine's a portable setup, so it's gonna be a little bit different, but the principle's still the same. So I have this eight gauge, 10 foot set of jumper cables. I chop the ends off that side, and this side connects to the battery. Now, what I decided to do is splice into the eight gauge wire here and split it into two 12 gauge wires. So there's two wires coming off the positive, two wires coming off the negative, and they tap into these Anderson power pole connectors and hook into the charger. Now. 8 gauge wire supports 30 amps max. I already had these laying around, so I didn't want to go buy new ones. But if you were going to buy a new set, you may as well buy like a 6 gauge wire uh, jumper cable. Then you could support the max, uh, you know, 50 amps coming into this. Okay, excuse the engine noise, but I am here. I have my jumper cables connected to my starter battery. So this is a way you basically charge off any battery using this charger. Okay, we're getting a full 30 amps. Now this charger is completely adjustable. I can set this to 10, uh, 15, 20, 25, 30, 45, 50. Um, and so it is pulling 30 amps out of that battery. You might want to go with 20 uh, just to be a little bit safer on your alternator. Uh, 20 is quite a bit of charging. Okay, so I'm here in the back of my 4Runner and I have this built-in panel that I've come up with that has uh, USB ports, 12 volt socket, and an Anderson power pole port at the top. I just removed this panel and drilled uh, four holes in it, installed these circular plugs. I had to cut out a square and pop this in. I got a voltmeter, two USB ports, 12 volt socket, and a power switch. So the power switch disables just the voltmeter and USB ports and, uh, and the 12 volt socket, but the top is always powered on. So this runs all the way to the starter battery. And then I have this grounded to the frame so I can save on wiring. Um, it's just right here and uh, this I gave some slack so I could pull it out um, this is fused at the front of the vehicle so you always want to fuse near your battery basically I'm getting power from my front battery back to here so I can run fridges back here use USB ports for charging things like that um, I did this so that I could camp my forerunner or have my fridge sitting back here but when the alternator is charging the battery I hook up to these two here and then I connect these to the battery so i'm going to scoot the camera back a little bit so you guys see what's going on okay 29 amps so i'm charging my lithium iron phosphate battery at 29 amps uh, coming off of my starter battery so if you don't have solar panels or the sun is not shining this is the way to charge your lithium iron phosphate battery. 
Okay, time to talk about the solar charging aspect of this ABSO charger. So this supports 500 watt input on the MPPT solar charge controller. So I have these two connections coming off. And if you're careful, you can buy a solar panel on the market that already terminates in Anderson power pole. If you haven't seen our solar panel comparison video, we have uh, some recommendations. Both those recommendations actually terminated Anderson power pole. It was the Balder 120 watt panels and the version two of the Rock Pals, which is actually this panel here. You can see I only have two connections here. So let me show you how I went and got around that issue. So what I did is I just connected these two adapters that I made. So it's 12 gauge wire that splits off and it, I added additional two uh, Anderson power pole connectors. So now I have the ability to connect four of these solar panels in parallel to charge my battery. And they can charge my battery up near 30 amps. Okay, so I'm doing a solar test for you guys. Uh, I got some high clouds. Um, yeah, it's a little breezy today, so apologize for the wind noise on the mic. Um, so I have two 100 watt solar panels, Rock Pals version two, version one. Uh, Blue Eddy SP200, Sun Power Flex 50, All Powers 100, and then two New Powers 60 watts. So seven panels all plugged into parallel to plug into my battery. Now they're laying flat. Um, once again, high clouds. There are some wildfires around my area, so we're not going to get pristine numbers here, um, but we should get some good good results. Let's go ahead and plug it into the solar charge controller and see where we're getting on the battery. All right, taking both wires here, solar input, and uh, plug in one, and plug in the other. Solar charge controller is turning on. Awesome, 28 amps. Now I have the limit set at 35 amps. Um, it is completely adjustable, the amp limit. But yeah, we're getting 28, 29 amps. Um, very capable solar charge controller, um, especially running in parallel. Um, there's no amp limit like the EB70 on this guy. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome results. Well, what'd you guys think of that? I mean, isn't that pretty neat to be able to use solar panels and if there's no sun, you can, you can charge up your battery just off, you know, an alternator starter battery and not only just charge it, but man, you can charge it at 30 amps. Uh, well, you can do 50 amps. I only did it at 30 just because uh, my system is not quite set up for uh, the higher charging. But, you know, if you were looking for a DC to DC charger or a decent solar charge controller that can charge lithium iron phosphate, you know, this is your unit. Why go out and purchase two different uh, chargers and then have to deal with wiring and getting them to work together? Well, basically, if you buy this, you're, you're buying one unit, saving a little bit of money and... Uh, you know, this is, this is going to work well for you. You know, I purchased this last year and I'm just getting around to making a video on it. Uh, last year I went on a camping trip and I took a, just a solar charge controller with this battery here to power my fridges. And there was no sun the entire trip. It was all cloudy and this battery was getting really low. Uh, didn't have a way to charge it up and I was pretty desperate. Um, so I learned my lesson. I had to have another alternate way to charge my battery. So I went out and bought this with my own money. This is not a sponsored video. And uh, this has worked well ever since uh, I purchased it. Now I have the opportunity to charge with, uh, you know, another DC source if, you know, the sun's not around. It's great using solar panels. I always try to use that instead because then I don't have to use my engine or gas or anything like that. But in a pinch, it, sometimes you got to use DC to DC charging. Plus, you can charge your battery while driving. You know, it's, it's just gonna pull a little bit of power out of the alternator starter battery while you're driving down the road. It's gonna charge it up anyway. So uh, also another benefit. So if you guys have any questions or comments about uh, this charger, just put a comment below and I'll try to get back to you. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and link um, this product in the description. There are two of these. This is the 50 amp model and there's also a 30 amp model that's a little bit cheaper. Um, I almost should have bought the 30 amp because I've only use 30 amps but i kind of wanted to future proof myself and just make sure that if i ever got a larger battery you know i wasn't gonna have issues uh charging at a higher uh rate of charge so anyway thanks for watching guys uh appreciate you guys sticking to the end of the video right after i'm done talking here i'm gonna have the wiring diagram uh i'm gonna basically post a little bit more information about this charger and uh you know i'll also put in the description a link where you can get the manual for this anyway Thanks for watching guys. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next one.